For a larger apartment, you'll have to pay at least $800. Because people's reasoning is if they buy a big pack that is like this instead of this, then they won't be a 4,000 is um, like $80. <laughs> and finally, a lot of expats are saying they can live with 30,000 pesos. Hey, it's Mira Beauty! In today's video, I am going to talk about how much does it really cost to live here in Manila. This video can be very useful to you to help you decide on um, which area or which city here in the Philippines you want to move in if you're considering the cost of living. Today I'm going to speak about Manila and then later on I will also be creating another vlog for the cost of living in the province. So just a quick um, fact, Manila is the capital of the Philippines and the country's center of education, business, and transportation. As we all know, it is the most populous metropolitan region here in the Philippines. The term Manila is commonly used to refer to the whole greater metropolitan area or the city proper. The officially defined metropolitan area called Metro Manila includes the much larger Quezon City, um, the Makati Central Business District, Taguig, Pasig. It is the most populous region in the country. One of the most populous urban areas in the world even. And one of the wealthiest regions in Southeast Asia. That's big. Just knowing that, you can imagine the cost of living in Manila is not as cheap as you think it is. If you think about the people living in Manila, I mean the normal Filipinos who come to Manila to work. The situation is such that only a fraction of the city's population are able to enjoy the best things the city has to offer. And also, um, your own personal cost of living depends on what kind of lifestyle you want to have. I think that is the same with any other country. So let us start with the rent per month here in Manila. Rent for an apartment is much higher in Manila than most other places in the Philippines. Of course, we all know that. But if you are alone, you might prefer to stay in a boarding house or lodging house. There are some expats like backpackers who do that. Depending on the part of the city, you can find an apartment for as low as $200 to $500 if you have your mindset on living in the city center. For a larger apartment, you'll have to pay at least $800. But if you're alone and you are just looking for a simple like bachelor's pad, it will cost you about around $400. Plus, you need to consider the location also. If you prefer in the city center, then it will be even more expensive. If it is in the outskirt of the business center, then it will be a little bit cheaper. And also it is more practical and economical if you rent a bare unit and just buy your own furniture because renting a fully furnished unit is a lot more expensive. A 30 square meters bare unit can cost you around 50,000 pesos, but if you rent a fully furnished with the same area, the rent will not be less than 20,000 pesos. Okay, so utilities. The utilities are just sometimes, I don't know, it's ridiculously expensive in Manila. You can easily spend around $120, $130 per month that would include using an air conditioner around 8 hours per day, purely lights, gadget charging, TV, and hot water in an apartment of around 35 square meters will cost you over $150. One good advice if you are going to buy an air conditioning unit you should buy the one that is equipped with an inverter because you will save a lot of money in the long term. Yes, it's expensive, but in the long term, you can save more. Thank you later. Water bill is around $5 per month. It's not really expensive water here. 
let's move on to the transportation. There are various methods of transportation available. Taxis are quite common. So here in Manila, taxis are number one. Buses are also everywhere. There are also jeepneys which operate fixed routes like buses and usually have very cheap fares. Um, but it's so tiring to travel with jeepney, to be honest. You can also rent a car. Generally, rental cars come with drivers. They can be expensive to renting cars. There is a light rail system, but it's not comprehensive. It only goes down a few of the main roads. And uh, as you all know, the Philippines currently has just three operational commuter lines. The transportation system here in the Philippines is still a little bit um, complicated because the fact that the Philippines is an archipelago and we don't have commuter rails that stretch from the north of the Philippines to the south of the Philippines. So that can be a challenge also. Bus fare, jeepney fares are really cheap here in the Philippines. Uh, it's only the taxi that can sometimes rip you off. It depends on the driver. Okay, how about markets? Yeah, cooking at home is cheaper probably by 40% to 50% than eating outside. I strongly agree because that is also what I always do. I seldom eat out because every time, um, every time I eat outside, it's like I'm spending 500 pesos just for a meal. It's very expensive to eat outside unless you go to fast food. Yeah, it's that is the cheapest. You can shop at many supermarkets or like SM hypermarkets, Robinson's Mall. If you really want to splurge, you'll need around $500 a month and it also depends on your kind of food. There are also small bakers in the neighborhood that sell cheap breads and Sari Sari stores where you can buy goods in smaller packages. Actually, that is more economical for us because people's reasoning is if they buy a big pack that is like this instead of this, then they won't be able to control the serving so they prefer buying the small packs in a bundle because one pack is one serving or sometimes they even make it two servings for one pack so that is more economical for uh, Filipinos but you cannot really find Sari Sari stores in central business districts, no it's just on the outskirts of uh, the city center you can find Sari Sari stores but like BGC or like in the middle of Makati, central business district, there is no Sari Sari store there. There are only like 7-Eleven and such. Restaurants. If you're eager to try some local food, there are um, what we call carinderias or like a small restaurant, but we, really, we don't really call that restaurant, we call it carinderia or a canteen. Yeah, that's the best translation, like a canteen. They serve really, really cheap meals. They serve Filipino foods like adobo, um, sisig, um, pancit, what else, a lechon also. But of course, you can also find good restaurants catering to international tastes. And street food is also popular, but many say that it's not as good as in places like Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh, Shibuya or Singapore but they're still good and of course there are many high-end fancy restaurants and they're not cheap oh my gosh I, I saw one restaurant in bgc in bonifacio global city in taguig it's like one meal is like four thousand pesos four thousand is um like eighty dollars for one meal it's very expensive oh my gosh Sports and leisure. Man so Manila, the capital of this country, is literally filled with cinemas because there's a lot of malls here, so many malls, theaters, and other leisure opportunities. And a ticket for a movie in cinema will cost you around $5. But I don't know if there are still people who go to the cinema. I don't, I know, I don't. The last time I went to the cinema, it's um, 2017. <laughs> Actually, 2017. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, also, indulging in sports and business is more expensive here. Like in most countries, I think. 
If you want a gym or a fitness club membership, it will amount up to around $40. Much more than what is considered to be the country's average, actually. Okay, clothing and shoes. Major cities like Manila are literally brimming with large malls. Malls are literally everywhere. Every few years, it seems as though a gigantic new mall is built, rivaling the last gigantic mall. They also offer um, great shopping opportunities since the prices are somewhat low. But, but for me, I'm a normal Filipino, the prices in malls are not low for me. Because for example, you can buy a Levi's jeans for around $40 while a pair of running shoes of brands like Nike cost around $70. Maybe it's cheaper than your country, but for a normal Filipino like me, it's still expensive. Lighter pieces of clothing like shirts and summer dresses are around $20. I never go to malls just to buy shoes or clothes. I buy online. Online is a good option to uh, save money. They're much cheaper and the quality is also good. Okay, so now I am going outside to show you the prices of goods here in Manila. So let's go! What? I'm going to record the prices. The price is pretty much expensive now. Seriously. Me, after graduation, I was only getting 50,000 pesos or $350 monthly, and I was happy. I paid rent, I ate three times a day, and eat out once in a while. Although with that amount of 1,000 pesos, I couldn't save. Today with my salary, 25,000 pesos, I can save a little. I always make sure anyway that I have some amount to save. And also other things are better and cheaper nowadays, like better technology has become cheaper. Prepaid phone rates are even lower now. And food can cost quite the same if you just know where to look or better if you cook at home. It is true that everything else has gone up but not irritatingly so if you live simple. I mean simple, no car, not a fancy apartment, not eat out every day. And finally, a lot of expats are saying they can live with 30,000 pesos, like $600. That might be enough today, but you cannot waste any of it. You need to have discipline and not spend on weekends. This is especially true if you are in Metro Manila. If you move to second tier um, cities like Iloilo, Bacolod, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, Baguio, etc. Things might be a little better with cheaper rent, cheaper food, and lower transportation rates. Okay, so that's about this video. I hope you guys find this video useful for your future trip to the Philippines. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to read them. Thank you. See you in my next video.